Well, what a week, eh? What a week it's been. It's got to come to an end sometime, but what a week it's been. In your teams, getting to know different people. In your first sport, every single morning. Second sport, team challenge, still got a bit to go of that. Bleep test, nervous at the start, hopefully look back and like it now. The food, good food. What a week it's been. But the great escape, ultimate worship, the team meetings, do we really need them? What's the point of them? Just keep the sport, keep the teams, keep the fun, keep the food, but let's drop the themes, eh? Let's drop the meetings. What's the point of it all? What is the point? Well, in this great story with Zacchaeus, we find out the reason for it all. We find out why we think as team leaders, coaches, support staff, trainees here at Sports Plus, why we think there really is a point to it all. Why we really want to make sure you hear loud and clear about the, res the great escape and the rescue plan. And why we hope this afternoon you hear the call of the rescuer. Because we, we really think it's important for you to hear it. So let's get into the story. Let's find out about this guy, Zacchaeus, and let's find out what is going on. What's the point? Here we are. Jesus enters Jericho and was passing through. And we're introduced to a man called Zacchaeus. Here he is. Here he comes. Now, as he comes down, Zacchaeus, not the most popular of guys. What do we find out about him? He's a tax collector. Now, tax collectors, not the most popular of fellows. They work for the Romans, the enemies. In fact, they didn't just work for the Romans. They took your money and gave them to the Romans. Not very popular. But he's not just any old tax collector. Old Zacchaeus, chief tax collector. He's the boss of them. He's the one that's in charge. And that's why he's looking decent. Pretty wealthy. We find Zacchaeus, chief tax collector, not liked by the people, and he's got a bit of dollar about him. He's got a nice jacket, a decent hat. Zacchaeus, chief tax collector. And we read that Zacchaeus wants to find out about this guy, Jesus. He really wants to see Jesus. He's wandering around, looking for this guy, Jesus. Maybe he's heard little bits about him. Maybe he's heard about the miracles he's performed. The paralyzed man. The widow's son coming back to life. Maybe he's heard some of the teaching Jesus has done. He wants to see Jesus. Yet he's got a problem. You see, Zacchaeus, as we can see, he's not the tallest of fellows. He's a bit short. And as a result, there are massive crowds. And he just can't see him. What's Zacchaeus going to do? How's Zacchaeus going to get a glimpse of this guy, Jesus? He's come to his town. What's he going to do? So he runs. And he climbs a sycamore tree. Up he goes, going up his tree. And he climbs a sycamore tree to try and get that glimpse of Jesus. I wonder if you've ever had that kind of moment. I wonder if you've ever been at home in your town or maybe at your school when someone famous is coming by. Maybe it's been, if you remember back to the Olympics and the torch relay coming through your town, and you just want to see it. Remember I mentioned a couple of days ago, Tour de France, enjoyed watching it, started here in England. Here's a picture of the crowds. Tour de France, three stages in this country, over three million people turned out, actually went to watch it. Now, I can't quite make out, but I think that guy there is actually climbing something because he wants to see. Look how far back they are, all for a glimpse or Chris Froome as he goes past. Cavendish as he goes past, not for very long. But all for a glimpse of that one moment as the cyclist goes past. I wonder if you've ever had that moment. Trying to see, trying to take a, get a glimpse of that person. Zach's desperate to see Jesus. He gets up the tree. He's looking out for him. And then he spots him. That's him, isn't it? Is that him in the distance? Yeah, I think it is. There he comes. He's coming. He's coming over to me. Hang on a minute. He stopped. 
Here he comes. He sees Jesus. He sees him. Now learn your actors. It's come down a bit too early. Get back up there, Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus sees him. Jesus. Get up there, Zach. <laughs> Zacchaeus should be still up there. Up the tree. Jesus, walking past, stops. Right underneath the spot where Zacchaeus is. Imagine you're Zacchaeus now. He's there. Where's my phone? Get a picture of this. Snapchat, tweet it. There he is. What happens next? Well, then we hear Jesus' is call. Look at verse 5. should come up on the screen behind us. Jesus, when Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. Talk about inviting yourself over, eh? Come down immediately. I must come to your house today. Zacchaeus, I want to stay at your house. Oh, imagine if you're Zacchaeus. Now, not only have you got a perfect view, but Jesus stopped and addressed him. What does Zacchaeus do? So he came down at once. <laughs> and then he welcomed him gladly. Zacchaeus bounds down the tree, sees Jesus, and says, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers, Zacchaeus. That'll do, mate. <laughs> Give him a little ripple. <laughs> there you go. Zacchaeus bounds down the tree and welcomes him gladly. And what was the response? Well, we see two responses in the story. First, the people. See what the people think? Verse 7. All the people saw this and began to mutter, he has gone to be the guest of a sinner. Jesus, what are you doing? Do you know who this guy is? He's a tax collector. In fact, he's not just any tax collector. He's chief tax collector. You don't want anything to do with him. Jesus, you're a great guy. Done some great things. Brilliant teacher. What are you doing with him? You don't want anything to do with him. Zacchaeus is seen as a sinner. He works for the Romans, not just gives them our money, but probably says, hey, one for them, one for me. Takes a bit of ours. You don't want anything to do with him. What is Jesus doing? And what is Zacchaeus' response? But Zacchaeus stood up, and said to the Lord, look, Lord. Addresses him as Lord. Look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor. And if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Zacchaeus goes, Lord, I've realized I've done wrong. I've realized I've messed people up. I realize I've been dishonest. What's going on? Well, the last two verses, we see what is going on here. Last two verses, Jesus explains exactly what is going on here. Verse 9. Jesus says, today. Today, salvation has come to this house. Because this man, Zacchaeus, is the son of Abraham. Zac is saved. Salvation has come to this house. Zac's been rescued. And not because of anything he's done. It's not Zac that's done the rescuing. Jesus has. What has Zac done? Oh, he's recognized who he is. He's recognized that he is a simple person. He recognizes he's been dishonest. He recognizes he hasn't lived as God would have wanted him to live. And he recognizes who Jesus is. 
Lord. Salvation has come to this house. For this man is a son of Abraham. What's Jesus talking about? Is he talking about his dad? For this man's a son of Abraham? No, if we go right back to the beginning of the Bible, back in Genesis, God promises Abraham that you will have many descendants. And not just descendants physically, lots of children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren, but you'll have many descendants like you who will trust in me, who will be true sons of Abraham, true followers of God. And that's what Zach is. Zacchaeus is a son of Abraham. As I was reading that, as I was saying it just then, reminds me of a song, doesn't it? Heard it today. Father Abraham had many sons. Many sons had Father Abraham. I am one of them, and so are you. So let's all praise the Lord. Hang on, though. Are you? Father Abraham had many sons. Many sons had Father Abraham. Are you one of them? And are you? Zacchaeus is. Zacchaeus is a son of Abraham. And I look forward to the day where I will praise the Lord with him. Are you? Are you a son of Abraham? Do you realize who you are? Do you realize over the course of this week that you are in desperate need of rescue? That we have all sinned and turned our backs and rejected the God who created us? And do you realize that Jesus is the rescue plan? That he has power? That he died on the cross for you? That he is the risen rescuer coming back to life? Do you realize that you are lost? Do you realize that you are in need of rescue? And do you realize that Jesus can rescue? Because this is why Jesus came. This is why we think it's so important. Verse 10, last line. For the Son of Man, which is a title Jesus called himself, for Jesus came to seek and to save the lost. That's why we do it. Of course, the sport's great. Of course, team challenge is a real highlight. Of course, we love coming to this school because the food's great. Of course, the game's brilliant. Sing along's great. But we want you to hear about Jesus. Why? Because he came to seek and to save the lost. And hopefully, you've heard this week that you are in, are in need of rescue that you need rescue and that Jesus is able to provide that rescue. That Jesus is able to provide for your great escape. Father Abraham had many sons. Many sons of Father Abraham. Are you one of them? Are you? Will you think about the claims of Jesus? Will you hear the call of Jesus? Will you hear, will you realize that you are in need of rescue? And will you hear the call of the rescuer who comes to seek and to save and to provide for your great escape? Let's have 30 seconds, just as the music plays really quietly, as we just think about what we've heard this week, about our great need of rescue, about the call of the rescuer. Then I'm going to pray. And then we'll head out for our final team challenge of Sports Plus 2014. Let's have a few moments quiet.